everyone. Welcome to Malt Muser Whiskey Reviews. I'm Eric, and on the bar for today, getting our first review of 2024, Glenn Morangy's A Tale of Tokyo. As always here on the channel, nose taste finish review of this whiskey's coming your way. I'll tell you a little bit about the value, share final thoughts, give it a final score, leave you with a malt musing. But first, if you haven't, take a sec, smash that subscribe button. Goes a long way to supporting the channel. If you enjoy the reviews, Make sure you don't miss them if you're subscribed. And it'll also keep you posted about any live streams I do. Okay, let's dive right in. So first and foremost, Glenmorangie, uh, single malt Highland whiskey from Scotland. Um, this is the third release in their, I guess we can call it Tales series, along with A Tale of Cake and A Tale of the Forest. Uh, this one is called A Tale of Tokyo. Pretty nice art. Usually get pretty good looking uh, packaging with Glenmorangie. Uh, here's what it has to say about the whiskey. It is a Highland single malt, as I said, limited release. It is a marriage of whiskey aged in Mizanara, bourbon, and sherry casks. Um, we'll dive into that in a second. There is some chat on the side kind of telling you a little bit about the story behind it. We'll forego that. It does say non-chill filtered and small lettering here on the back, which is great. Unsure about natural color. Well, let's take a look at the bottle. Classic Glen Morangy bottle. All right. Uh, talks a little bit about uh, the story behind the whiskey, et cetera, et cetera. And that is about it. 46% ABV. So 46% non-chill filtered. Pretty great. All right. Let's get this in the glass. So this is the color. Again, we don't know that this is a natural color. <clears throat> But we do know non-chill filtered, 46%. So let's give it on those. Sweet, fruity, and malty. Winston the Whiskey Cat, what do you think? Never. He is a very, very discerning palate. Okay, so I'm picking up some really classic Glenmorangy notes. Orange kind of citrus zest, there's some honey. You get a bit of that kind of sandalwood, mizanara um, note coming in the back, but it is very well integrated. It's not overpowering. There's a little bit of a peppery bite. Maybe some hints of leather. Yep, yeah, let's give it a taste for lunch. Mm-hmm. Nice mouthfeel. It's rather rich. Influences that sherry cast coming in. The Mizanara is giving it, again, a little bit of a slightly mocha, sandalwood, muted spice as it goes into the finish. But the star of the show here, really, slight fruit notes. Definitely orange, getting a little red, red fruits. Medium finish. Little pepper bite on the end. Quite pleasant. Okay. We got the Glen Morangy pitcher here filled. Some nice cold filtered water. Let's put a few drops on here and just see what else we can tease out of this whiskey. Okay. So more of that citrus. I'm getting a little bit of a lemon in addition to the orange here now. Again, honey toffee. Caramel. I feel like the bourbon cask is showing up more here on the nose with water. Sweet noki. Here we go. Nice. Quite nice. That Mizanar oak. Showing up a bit more here as it goes into the finish with water, a bit spice, pepper note. We can really not a whole lot different here with water. Finish is a little bit longer though. It's medium long. Okay. Let me do one more sip. Yeah. 
if anything, this reminds me a little bit of the Glen Morn G18. Um, but of course, the finish is really what's giving it in uh, some some flair. What's really interesting, though, I mean, is again, and I shouldn't say finish. It does say this was married. So this is, you know, this wasn't put in a finished Mizanar cask, actually. It's bourbon, sherry, and Mizanar all married together at 46%. Let's talk about the value. So these are limited releases. As I mentioned, this is the third in the story series. Pardon me, the tail series. Um, you can find this pretty readily here in the United States in early 2024, right around that $110, $120 mark. Um, these are usually a little bit pricier um, because of the rare casks that they tend to use in some of these stories. Uh, pardon me, tales. Um, series bottlings. I'm going to put this right at kind of a medium value. Um, I think the price is for nowadays kind of right where you would expect it to be. So let's talk final thoughts though. Um, I think this is a pretty nice whiskey. Uh, it's a lot more um, drinkable than maybe I felt like the cake tail was um, where that was kind of, you know, one or two drams and I was kind of over it. This one, I feel like there's a little bit too more to explore. It's again, got that nice 46 ABV. We don't have an age statement, but um, I think this one sits pretty nice in there. Um, they did a good job not making this a full, just kind of Mizanara experience. And instead, I feel like it's married pretty well. We're getting a nice balance out of it. Uh, a totally decent whiskey, good for kind of casual sipping. It's got something to explore. So the final score here on the Glen Mornji, A Tale of Tokyo, I'm going to give this a 3.25 out of 5. Um, Definitely would like something a little bit more working here for the price. Um, everything is a bit muted. And while the marriage is nice, I would prefer some kind of bolder flavors and a little bit more depth. But all in all, I think this is a, an above average release uh, from Glen Morangy for the series. And uh, I'm definitely curious to see what they come up next. So 3.25 out of 5 is the final score here on the Glen Morangy A Tale of Tokyo. Let me know below. Have you had this before? What did you think? Um, and with that, uh, I will send you over to your malt musing and we will catch you next time here.